Hello folks, Graphing the Monopoly. You've seen a couple of videos now, you've read in your text, and you've discussed in class some of the theoretical implications of Monopoly. Now it's time to go over some graphic basics so that you don't make mistakes <clears throat> as you approach both the AP and the IB examination. <clears throat> so, um, first things first. <clears throat> because the market is the only seller in town, uh, the industry or the market supply graph is sufficient to be able to analyze this one firm. They are one and the same. We don't need a two-pane analysis like we did for perfectly competitive firms in order to analyze the monopoly. The market pane and the firm pane are exactly the same because the monopoly is the only game in town. So, vertical axis is price, horizontal axis is quantity, price is also the monopoly's cost, and quantity is also the monopoly's output. The monopolist faces the market downward sloping demand curve, and that means in order to sell more, what's the monopolist have to do? He's got to lower his price. It's helpful when you're graphing the monopoly to make your demand curve touch the, uh, the, the price axis. Because the monopolist has to lower the price to sell more, that means the marginal revenue that the monopolist earns on um, increased units of output and the sales associated with increased units of output is sharp is falling twice as quickly as as um, the monopolist's demand. And so the marginal revenue curve and the demand curve are divorced in this particular situation. Make sure that you do this. It's a common mistake that students new to economics make is when they combine their marginal revenue curve and demand curve when graphing a monopoly. Don't do that. The two are divorced. Draw your marginal revenue curve falling twice as sharply and make it go negative. Next thing we need to do is draw in the firm's marginal cost curve. Just like a perfectly competitive firm, it's Nike shaped swoop. We find the profit maximizing rate of output at MC equal MR. Here's the point. There's the level of profit maximizing output at Q1. Here's another mistake people make. They don't, they don't take, they don't go all the way back up to the demand curve to find the market price. Got to do that. So we're going to go up to the demand curve. We're going to find the market price. We're going to establish it here at P. Still don't know whether there's a profitable firm. We need the average total cost curve, so I'm going to throw one in right here. I'm going to make a note of where the profit maximizing rate of output bisects the average total cost curve going to denote it here and fill up that revenue box there. That is a, did you guys get it? Yeah, super normal profit. One other point of, of concern here, we've got to talk about dead weight loss. The marginal cost curve for the monopoly is its supply curve and because it's the only seller in town that's also the industry supply curve. So where supply or marginal cost here would have met demand at this point where my arrow is would have been allocatively efficient. This is where markets really should operate, at least if if they're if they're very efficient. And uh, this one isn't. Uh, you know, we would have uh, with the more competition, we would have had some quantity out here, perhaps at Q2. We're only getting Q1 though, so we've had some loss to society, and we denote that with this triangular shaped area that's below the demand curve, above the supply curve, and then bisected by the quantity. Mac profit maximizing rate of output, the triangular shaped area, the loss of surplus to society is something we call dead weight loss. Make sure you diagram that and include that on your monopoly diagrams. Loss to society because you, in this case, haven't had as much competition as you would like. Can a monopoly earn a loss? Yes, absolutely. If we would have put our average total cost curve way up high, like I've just noted with ATC2, uh, find a profit maximizing rate of output, take it all the way up to the monopoly curve, and we find that the costs are superseding the selling price, and there is my loss. Moving on, a couple other points that I want to touch on. Uh, when we re regulate the monopoly, we would like to remember, uh, get back to this point of allocative efficiency, which I'm denoting here, where supply would have equaled uh, demand. And so sometimes a monopoly is regulated to produce out here. It's moving off its efficient point, though, and profit maximizing point. If we do that, we would like to be able to offer consumers price P2, and we get a whole lot more consumption if we do that. Uh, and uh, oddly enough, we find that in this case, even, even uh, if we subsidize a monopoly, it's still earning a pretty healthy supernormal profit. Not as much as it was earning, which is here, but, but still a, a decent amount. I hope that makes sense uh, for you, just basics of graphing a monopoly. Guys, I'll see you soon.